Early 1944, Dayton, Ohio. A test pilot grips the throttle of AP 51B Mustang and pushes it further than anyone dares. The engine screams past its limits, the boost pressure climbing to 75 inches of mercury. The Mustang tears through the sky at 448 miles per hour, shattering expectations. Down below, engineers exchange stun glances. This isn't just a small improvement, it's a revolution. The secret? A new fuel, dyed purple, known only as grade 150. A chemical advantage so powerful it would rewrite everything the Luftwaffe thought they knew about American fighters. The war in the air was about to change, not because of a new plane, but because of what was inside its fuel tanks. While German engineers obsessed over aircraft design, American and British chemists had already begun a quieter war, the war of fuel chemistry. Germany's best aviation fuel, the C3 grade, barely touched Allied 130 grade performance. But the Allies were already flying on a formula the Germans could only dream of, 150 grade aviation gasoline. It didn't just make engines stronger, it made them uncatchable. Every drop represented a scientific victory that would soon translate directly into dominance in the skies. Behind this transformation stood General James Doolittle, a man who believed that fuel chemistry could win wars. Years before the U.S. entered the conflict, he pushed oil companies to develop high-octane aviation fuel. By 1943, his vision paid off. 17 Allied refineries were producing 130-grade gasoline, powering Spitfires, Mustangs, Lightnings, and Thunderbolts. Germany's synthetic fuel plants couldn't keep up. Their process, converting coal into gasoline, was ingenious but painfully slow. Even at full production, Germany made only a fraction of what flowed freely from Allied refineries. And worse, most of it was low octane. While American and British fuel poured from coastal tanks, German pilots took off with B4 fuel, just 91 octane. Their premium C3 blend, reserved for top fighters like the FW-190, was only available in small amounts. By early 1944, German fuel shortages were critical. They had the planes, but not the chemistry to push them to their limits. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, Allied chemists were preparing to unleash a fuel that would do what no aircraft upgrade could, break the laws of physics as the Luftwaffe understood them. In 1943, British and American scientists finally created the impossible, 150 grade fuel. It wasn't 150 octane, which was chemically impossible. Instead, it was a performance number, meaning it could withstand 50% more compression than pure ISO octane before detonating. Dyed purple for identification, it became known as the purple gas. When tested in Merlin engines, it allowed boost pressures of 75 inches of mercury instead of 67. That extra margin meant more horsepower, more climb, and more speed, without changing a single bolt on the aircraft. Tests at right field confirmed it. AP-51 running on standard fuel hit 437 miles per hour. The same plane on purple fuel? 448 miles per hour. The difference seemed small, until combat proved otherwise. In early 1944, the decision was made. 150 grade fuel would enter operational service. The 8th Air Force in England was desperate. Despite new Mustangs escorting bombers deep into Germany, losses were brutal. They didn't just need long range, they needed speed dominance. And that's exactly what Purple Fuel delivered. May 1944. The first barrels of 150 grade fuel arrived in England under tight secrecy. Not every squadron got it. Supplies were limited and commanders wanted data before risking wider use. But those who flew with it instantly noticed the difference. When the V-1 flying bombs began terrorizing London, the RAF gave priority to squadrons running on 150-grade fuel. Interception required 400 miles per hour at sea level, a speed few fighters could reach. The purple-fueled Mustangs could. They became the saviors of London, swatting V-1s out of the sky with unmatched speed. June 1944, D-Day. As Allied troops stormed the beaches, the skies were guarded by P-51s running on purple power. 
German pilots began filing strange reports. Mustangs that accelerated faster, climbed steeper, and simply couldn't be caught. Luftwaffe intelligence dismissed these as pilot exaggerations. But the reports kept coming. Something was happening in the air, something the Germans couldn't explain. The truth? The Allies had quietly rewritten the physics of aerial combat, and the Luftwaffe had no answer. One of Germany's most celebrated aces, Gerhard Barkhorn, had over 275 victories. But in 1944, he faced something new, Mustangs that behaved like different machines altogether. After the war, he admitted he couldn't understand it then. Later, when he test flew captured American fighters, he realized the secret, fuel chemistry. The same P-51 he had once outrun was, by late 1944, faster and stronger, all because of what was inside its tanks. For the Luftwaffe, the fight had turned from tactical to impossible. By late 1944, the secret of purple fuel began spreading across Allied bases. Pilots whispered about the magic gas that turned their Mustangs into monsters. Ground crews guarded it like gold. Each barrel marked 100-150 grade. Handle with care. Soon, P-47 Thunderbolts and even Spitfires received the upgrade. At full boost, they could climb faster, dive longer, and hit harder. The Luftwaffe called them Super Mustangs. But the real superpower wasn't in the metal. It was in the chemistry. The U.S. 8th Air Force authorized experimental overboosts up to 80 inches of mercury. It was risky, one wrong throttle move, and the engine could explode. But American pilots took that gamble. In dogfights over Berlin, a split-second boost meant life or death. Those extra 10 inches of pressure gave them a burst of raw acceleration that left German fighters helpless. It was like flipping on a nitrous switch, temporary, dangerous, but absolutely devastating. The Luftwaffe simply couldn't match it. Desperate, Germany tried to adapt. Engineers pushed for MW-50 injection, a system that sprayed methanol water mix into the engine to cool it and prevent knocking. It worked briefly, but the mixture was corrosive, unreliable, and supply lines were collapsing. Meanwhile, Allied pilots had an endless stream of refined purple fuel shipped safely across the Atlantic. Every month, the Luftwaffe lost more pilots and planes than it could replace. Fuel, not bullets, was bleeding Germany dry. By the winter of 1944, the once-feared Luftwaffe was collapsing. Pilots were flying fewer missions not because of fear, but because of fuel rationing. Many new recruits barely logged 10 hours before combat. Across England, Mustang engines roared daily. Confident, relentless, unstoppable. The combination of long range, speed, and purple power allowed the Allies to escort bombers deep into Germany and back, without losses once thought inevitable. For the first time, air superiority belonged entirely to the Allies. So what was this purple magic? The secret was in tetraethyl lead, aromatic hydrocarbons, and anti-detonation additives that allowed higher compression ratios. Essentially, the fuel burned slower, cooler, and cleaner, unlocking hidden horsepower. Every drop carried more energy potential without pre-ignition. It was chemistry pushing machinery beyond its designed limits. This wasn't just an engineering achievement. It was a scientific masterpiece born in a refinery lab. By early 1945, Germany had begun running on fumes, literally. Allied bombers targeted fuel plants relentlessly. Synthetic fuel facilities like Luna and Pollitz were reduced to rubble. Every mission flown meant less gas for training, less for defense, and less for retreat. Meanwhile, Allied forces stockpiled millions of gallons of high-grade gasoline in advance of the final push. When tanks rolled into the Rhine, their engines and their skies ran on the same chemical advantage that had won the air war. In the final months, German aces like Galland and Hartmann fought hopeless battles. Even when they scored kills, they couldn't stop the flood of Mustangs. The Mi-262 jet fighter was their last hope. Faster, deadlier, futuristic. But jets burned fuel even faster. And with refineries destroyed, 
Even the most advanced aircraft in the world was grounded by empty tanks. The war of technology had been lost not in the cockpit, but in the barrel of a refinery. When peace returned, the secret of 150-grade fuel faded into obscurity. Pilots remembered it as a wartime miracle, but it had done its job. By the end of 1945, the Allies had produced more than 100 billion gallons of aviation fuel, a chemical triumph unmatched in history. The world moved on to jets, but the legacy of that purple fuel lived on in every lesson about engineering, chemistry, and dominance through innovation. Today, few remember that one of World War II's most decisive weapons wasn't a gun or a plane. It was a formula, a hidden advantage inside every Allied engine. A quiet revolution brewed not in battlefields, but in laboratories and refineries. It proved that science, not just courage, decides the fate of nations, and that the difference between survival and destruction can sometimes be measured in octane. The purple fuel disappeared, replaced by the age of jet propulsion, but its spirit, the drive to innovate beyond limits, shaped the modern world. Every rocket, Every supersonic jet, every Formula One engine carries echoes of that same philosophy. Power comes from chemistry. The P-51 Mustang became a symbol of freedom and speed, but behind its legend was the unsung hero, the fuel that made it fly faster than fear itself. The true weapon of victory was purple. The scale of Allied fuel production was staggering. American refineries churned out millions of gallons per month enough to supply every bomber, fighter, and reconnaissance plane. Every barrel required careful blending, quality checks, and transportation across oceans. While German engineers struggled with limited coal-to-gasoline conversion, the Allies had industrial infrastructure, workforce, and safety nets that Germany could not match. Victory in the air was as much a factory achievement as a pilot's skill.